been through something this week and you didn't know how you was going to get through it but there was God standing right there and really all he wanted you to do was just acknowledge him come on somebody can I get the witness
on, put your hands together. Stand, stand to your feet and sing it with us. carrots again and we ask we thank God for blessing us to see another day so let us rejoice and be glad in it I will do our invocational prayer dear Lord and Father thank you that you promise us that we're two or three are gathered you are there in the midst Lord we welcome you among us today and celebrate the gift of life that you have lavished upon us Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, 
one that said, oh, he's made of believe. He's made of believe.
big boys. praise all those words we just sung God has did it for us come on somebody give God a hand clap of praise come on I shouldn't have to pump you like that because God has done things for you when you leave here God has already prepared you to do what you're gonna do you may be seated a scripture is coming from Psalms 104 1 through 6 Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who cover thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the water, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, and who make it his angel spirit, his ministry of flame and fire, who laid the foundation of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Thy cover it with the deep as with the garment, the water stood above the mountains. God's word for God's people. Amen. We'll do our offertory and our prayer for it. Stand. Generous Father, accept the gift we place before you. May it be used to do may it be used to uplift your kingdom. Amen. All things. I thank you for the privilege of serving you today, and now let us prepare our hearts and mind for a wonderful message. Amen. Thank you. The Lord. Let the Come church on. say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. amen. Right before we get ready to have our next selections, amen, I think we're going to have a black history moment at this time. Amen. So we have some individuals going to come and read us a few things, and we're going to go from there. Amen. Come on, y'all. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. Everything that have breath ought to be praising the Lord, y'all. Come on now. Amen. I know it's the first of the month, but my God, come on in here. Amen. Go ahead. before his football games. As a result, he was suspended and has not been able to get back into the league. Recently, the possibility of him joining a team has resurfaced. In addition, there has been talk of singing the Black National Anthem instead of the Star Spangled Banner at the Super Bowl game in 2024. Why, you ask? Let's listen to this video. Thank you. Um, and it was, <laughs> it is not new information, but the explanation is clear. Yes. 
A new push by the California NAACP to get rid of the national anthem. This song is wrong. It should never have been there. And uh, just like we didn't have it until 1931, it won't kill us if it goes away. The NFL protests during the playing of the Star Spangled Banner have led the organization to take a closer look at the lyrics of the song. And they're now calling the anthem racist and anti-black and are urging Congress to replace it altogether. New tonight, CBS 13's Shirin Rajay has more on this controversial issue. Colin Kaepernick started the NFL protest that quickly spread to bring attention to systemic racial injustice in the country. But California NAACP President Alice Huffman says Kaepernick's message was lost when it turned into a debate about the flag. The real intention got overlooked and it's become something that's dividing us. And I'm looking for a way to bring us back together. Huffman says the protests did lead her to look at the lyrics of the Star Spangled Banner, especially the parts of the anthem we don't typically sing. It's racist. It doesn't represent our community. Uh, it's anti-black uh, people. Huffman is referring to the third stanza, which includes the lyric, No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. She says some interpretations conclude that the lyrics celebrate the deaths of black American slaves fighting for freedom, and the song should be replaced with something that supports all our values. That's an extreme way of doing things. The opinions varied here at the VFW in West Sacramento. I believe it, it is a slap across the face. Whether it's, there's some kind of little, a little flaw in the context of what this is, I don't see it that way. I have to stick with our traditions and our values of what, what, we, what we represent. It won't solve any problem. Huffman says it may not solve anything, but it's a step towards social injustice that she says is long overdue. This country is a country that has shared values, and the more we, we respect each other, the better off we'll be as a country. A separate resolution by the California NAACP is calling on Congress to censure President Trump for his remarks about firing those who don't stand for the anthem. The organization is still looking for legislative sponsors for those resolutions. Please, please note that the purpose of the moments in black history here at Cary's is to add to your knowledge of history as it affects the black race. We are not to encourage you to sit or kneel during the national anthem. We simply want you to be aware of the facts. It is significant to note that these lyrics were written by Francis Scott Key, a slave owner. We just want to, rem to uh, we just want you to remain woke. Thank you for your time. Amen. 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 Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. We totally agree with the the last stanza that Charity has read. Amen. No one is advocating for anyone to stand stand up or sit down. However. We are people that we want to be abreast of what's taking place. And as uncomfortable it is, and many times when it comes to the church, amen, racism still lives, saints of God, amen. It still exists, amen. You will be, in some communities, you will not be accepted, nor will you be, amen, treated fairly based upon the color of your skin. That has nothing to do with you being saved, unsaved. It's just the world in which we live in. And however, if we're going to ever overcome the social injustice, we've got to continue on standing up, amen, speaking our voices out, amen, that we may be heard. When my daughters used to go to the CDC many, many years ago, and when a child would hit one of them, they taught them in the CDC that when someone hits you, you go and tell that child, I don't like what you did to me. And that's all we're saying, amen, saints of God. It is, it, is, it is time out for believers to sit back and keep your mouth closed when we see that the world in which we live in is not fair or it's not equally right when we live, what we live in. And so if there's ever going to be a time that we need to step on our faith, now is the time, saints of God. I know that we live in a world where many, many times, amen, because of some of the oppressions and the depressions that we've, we've experienced as people of color, we're scared sometimes to speak up but saints, you have nothing to lose no more, amen, because everything is speaking out. I wish you could have been here last Sunday. Some of you was here, amen, with doing our time, our me, that me, the men's ministry, amen, and the pastor stood up ver verbally and said, it's time for us to stand up and speak out, amen, and I, I totally agree with that. So we give God the unending glory for this black history moment, amen, this black history time. I thank God for charity. Thank God for Mrs. Oliver and anyone else who has a part in our time that we can be, stay, we can stay woke, amen, that we can Amen. continue on being abreast of what's going on in the world in which we live in. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning for the truth, because the truth 
will make you free. Amen. The truth will make you free. That's the only thing going to make you free is the truth, saints of God. And as long as, amen, we stay in denial and the longest, longer we, amen, take a, amen, a, we ignore the hours that we're living in, it's not only going to affect us, it's going to affect our kids, our grandkids, our great-grandkids, and our great-great-grandkids. So we as a body of people, amen, the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Do you believe that this morning? If God be for us, who can be against us? And so we praise God that God is for us. Come on, give him a hand. Give him a hand clap of praise again this morning. Come on, choir, you bless us. Amen. As we prepare this morning for our time of message. Amen. Come on, church, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Don't give it to me. Don't give it to the pastor. But give God some hand clap of praise. Help us clap and sing the song. The blood still works. The blood still works. It will never. The blood still works. The blood still works. The blood still works. The blood.
People say that the church say man. Let the church say amen again. One more time for the Father. Amen. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Amen. We're going to prepare our hearts. Amen. Got a good word this morning for you. Coming out of the book of Psalms. Amen. Psalms 95. You can go on and turn there with me. Amen. But let's have a word of prayer. Amen. As we prepare this morning for the word of God. Father, thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. It could have been me. But we thank you, Father, for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you, God, for your love and your kindness. We thank you, God, for your word, for truly your word is a lamp to our feet. It is a light unto our pathway. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who comforts and guides us and keeps us when, Lord, we want to give up. We thank you, God, for the men and women of God, Father God, who comes to aid and, Lord God, who comes to encourage us, Lord God, in a time of need. We thank you for being a provider, Lord God, when, Lord God, we don't know where our next need is going to come. We thank you for being a healer. For you said by your stripes we're healed. We thank you, God, for salvation. For, Lord God, you told us in your word, God, when we was yet sinners, you already had died for us. But we thank you most of all for eternity, Lord God. The Father God, when we leave this place, we know that we have a home, Lord God, where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. God, we're just thankful this morning, God. It could be worse than what it is, God, but you kept, Lord God, that, Lord God, those angels kept and kept around us that kept all hurt, harm, or danger away from us, and we're thankful. So, Father, as we come right now, we're thankful for an opportunity to God to stand and declare and decree that you are God, and beside you there is none other. We thank you, God, that you've drawn by your spirit, God. For you said in your word, if you would be lifted up, you would do the drawing. And so, God, we're not here on our own happenstance, but we're here because we know, God, by coming what it does for us, Lord God, as a believer. And so, Father, I pray that, God, your word says that, God, Lord God, how can they hear without a preacher? How can he, how can she preach unless they've been sent? You said, how beautiful are the feet of those who carry the good news, Lord. So, Father, I pray this morning for the anointing to rest upon my life, God, to rest upon my ministry, God, to word, rest upon my message that, God, as the word of God come forward, Lord God, it would feed your people. Give them direction, Lord God. Give them encouragement, God. Show them, Lord God, who you are without a shadow of a doubt in the name of Jesus. God, breathe in this place. Breathe by your Holy Spirit, God. Let your word, God, qu quicken us like never before in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you right now, God, if someone would hear this message who's not born again, that, God, the word would arrest them and cause them, Lord God, to yield to you, allow you to be their Savior and their Lord. We honor you for it. We count it done. We believe it by faith, Father. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Will we first give God the honor? Give God the glory. Give God the praises. We are honored, amen, that God is still God. And besides him, there is none other. Aren't you glad this morning that we serve that type of God? Even when we are not, amen, fit for him. Amen. His love, he still loves us because the Bible said that there is nothing can separate us from the love of God. Do you believe that this morning? You believe no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've done, amen, no matter what you will do, that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And we praise God for that this morning. Amen. We give God the honor and glory this morning for our wife. Amen. Thank God for her. Thank God for our children. Amen. Thank God for our son in love. Amen. We praise God for him. Amen. We're honored. Amen. That they come down to see us quite often. Amen. Praise God. Trinity, when she was in college, she couldn't get her to come home. Amen. Now she's married. Want to come home every weekend. Praise his holy name. So we praise God for her. Amen. Her and Kima, we honor them. Amen. Thank God for Trinity. I think Zoe's up front, up top. Amen. Zoe's with us as well. So we praise God for our family this morning. Amen. Thank God. Amen. For Reverend Staten. Amen. I think she may have stepped out. Amen. Praise God for her. Amen. Thank God for our deacons this morning, our trustees. Thank God for our ushers. Amen. Thank God for the media ministry. Amen. Thank God for our choir. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. For this choir. Amen. They are, amen, truly, amen, doing what the Lord would have them to do, being faithful. Amen. Sometimes it don't turn out the way we want it to turn out, but we're being faithful. Amen. And so we praise God for them this morning. Thank God for you this morning, saints of God. We're honored, amen, that you're here. 
amen, that you took time out of your day to press your way to the household of faith. And even though we know it shouldn't be oppressed, but because we, we live in a world where the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God of the pulling down of strongholds, every high thought, every evil imagination we are bringing into captivity. It is a fight sometimes to come out and be a part of the household of faith because there are so many things going on in the world in which we live in, and there are so many things going on cognitively. Amen. All of us this morning have a brain. Amen. And all of our brains, amen, don't function the same way. Amen. Some of our brains function better than the others. Amen. And so we're constantly in warfare, saints. Amen. Your mind, amen, is up on the, amen, uh, is up on the uh, danger because the enemy knows if he can steal your mind away, amen, if he can make you think, amen, that the house of faith is no use to you, amen, he'll, call, he'll stop you from coming, amen. Many people, uh, amen, walk away from the church, not because the church did something wrong to them, but they walk away because the enemy persuaded them that there is no value for them in the church. And so I want to commend you, saints of God, that uh, your faithfulness, amen, is being known towards God. And all of us, amen, could make excuses from Sunday to Sunday, like many people do, make excuses, amen, not to come. I know that some people are sick. I do understand that. I know that some people, amen, are taking care of some of the sick people. I realize that. I know some people have to work, amen. But I'm telling you, if you're not connected in, in the household of faith, you're going to fail. Why, Pastor? Because... The household of faith is what we get our strength at. Right. Amen. If you're going to be encouraged, if you're going to be strengthened, you've got to be connected to the household of faith. Amen. Why? Because the word of God tells us, amen, that we are to be connected. Amen. I'm going to talk about that this morning. Amen. And so we praise God for you this morning, for you making your way out to the household of faith. There are so many other things we could be doing. I need to cut my grass. Amen. I could be at home cutting my grass. Amen. I could be at home barbecuing. Amen. I could be at home, amen, cleaning up. There's so many different things I could be doing. You know, me and, me and the first lady, we was kind of excited because they was going to close down the government. We were going to be going to work. I was excited. Amen. I was so excited that I wouldn't have to go to work tomorrow morning. Hey, Dr. Saxon. Amen. But they came out for and said 45 more days. I told the wife about it. She almost started crying. Amen. <laughs> We was excited. Amen. Wow. Amen. We was going to do some housework, some yard work. Amen. But they messed us up. They messed us up. Amen. They messed us up. So I guess we'll get on up in the morning and go to work. Amen. Amen. I wasn't mad at all. Amen. I was not mad at all. If they wanted to shut, shut it down. Amen. The Lord is my provider. Amen. And so we praise God for that this morning. Got one announcement. Amen. First of all, I want to thank every person who came out last Sunday and supported a men's day program. Amen. We had a good time, saints. Amen. For those that didn't show up, we had a great time in this house last Sunday. With the male choir, amen, upon the direction of, amen, of Reverend Brown, they did an outstanding job. They really did. Amen. Thank God, amen, for our, 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 our deacons that was on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the program. Amen. Deacon Combs, Deacon Banks, amen, and Deacon J.J., all of them stood up to the plate, amen, but thank God most of all for that minister that came in this house, amen, and just wrecked the house, as we would say it, amen. That boy preached from the depths of his heart, amen. He encouraged us as men, amen, to continue on being faithful in the fire that we're in, amen. And there's anything, amen, as a child of God, I've learned, amen, if you just stay faithful, God would do his part, but the, more, the part the part with lies, amen, it's not God, it's many times it's us, amen, because we get impatient with God. I've been working, with a, working on a sermon, amen, when, when Jesse, when, excuse me, when Samuel went down by Jesse's house, mm -hmm. and even though that God called him to where he was at, he was rejected seven times before, amen, the king came forward, amen. I've been working on that sermon, just waiting for the Lord to release it, amen, out of me, but many, many times we sometimes as believers we take the first no and forget about it. And saints of God, you got to realize something, that every now and then that God sometimes will say no just to see how we're going to respond. Amen. And to, say, to, to, to lead into that, that young man last Sunday, amen, he really dealt, amen, to the scriptures when it came to, come to us as men of God being faithfulness. Amen. And so we praise God for all you that came out on last Sunday. Amen. We had a great time. And amen. And I know that God was honored, amen, in our time together, amen. One more announcement, amen. 
our nominating committee, we are in search of a church secretary. Amen. Amen. We are looking for a church secretary. Sister Peggy has given her resignation. Uh, she's going to be stepping down at the beginning of the year of next year, but she has said that she will, amen, um, assist whoever come forward. Amen. I have a person in mind. Amen. I'm going to uh, recommend that person to the uh, church nominating committee, but uh, when that time come out, amen, whatever needs to take place, we're believing by faith, amen, that God is going to slide the individual in that needs to be there. And so we're trusting by faith, amen, here at Carries. We know that we don't have a lot here. Amen. We understand that. But the ones we do have here, Amen. we know that they, they have value in them. Amen. And we don't want to put everything on one person. One person can't do it all, saints. Amen. That's why I don't try to sing in the choir. I don't try to be on the burial committee. Amen. I don't try to, amen, clean the church. All I'm called to do is be your pastor. Amen. And that's to teach you the word of God. Amen. That's to be the leader when it comes to spiritual things. Amen. And I know that, amen, many, many times some people want to, they want to have different hats on. And that's okay. Amen. But make sure if, you're, if, you're, if you have different hats on, that you have the strength to be able to operate in every hat that God placed upon you. So we'll believe in God for those individuals, amen, that may not be doing, amen, any, any uh, additional administrative work in this ministry, amen, that they will come forward and be a part of that time, amen, as our church secretary, amen. Come on, give God a hand, clap of praise this morning, amen. Psalms 95, Psalms 95. We want to talk about this morning corporate worship. That's what we want to talk about this morning, corporate worship. The Lord began to speak to me, amen, in this, in this particular passage, amen, about corporate worship, amen. And I know that here at, at uh, Carrie's Baptist Church, we are developing disciples of all ages, teaching them to know that they're born of God's spirit and everything, every promise that God has belong to them. And so every time I stand up, amen, I'm trying my best to develop God's people, amen. I know that sometimes... We believe that we know it all. We really don't, saints of God. Amen. There are so many things that we don't know about God, and that's why, amen, we should never assume that every time, amen, the word of God come forward, amen, we don't really know. We, we hear it, but sometimes we really don't know of it. And so this morning, we want to take a look, amen, at Psalms 95, the first five verses. We want to look at it from the aspect of the corporate worship. And as a believer... Knowing the purpose of Jesus' death is very important. That's one of the most significant things that as a born-again believer is that we know the significance, we know the importance, we know the purpose of Jesus' death. The scripture is very clear when speaking about Jesus' death and his purpose for dying. Acts, the 20th chapter, the 28th verse, says this. It says, pay close attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer to care for the church of God which he obtained by his blood. So Acts shows us, amen, in this particular setting that those who are part of the body of Christ, one thing we are to do is pay very close attention. The reason why we pay close attention to it, because God really cares about the church. Yes, he does. And not only do he cares about the church, but he has obtained the church by his blood. Now, brothers and sisters, we think about this this morning. All of us in the room are the church. Yes, this is a building that we come to worship in. But you and I, when we go out in the world in which we live in, or go out in our communities, we represent the church of the living God, meaning people are watching you and I, Amen. how we respond and how we act, Amen. how we cooperate. Amen. How we do business in the earth to see if really our God is for real. Yeah. You know, as many, many times, amen, the people sometimes say a lot of things, but sometimes their, 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 their actions don't speak what they're saying. And so this morning, as we take a look, amen, at the book of Psalms, Psalms 95, we're going to see that God is trying to help all of us understand why we come together as believers. Now, as a born-again believer, we are to yield to the spirit, or we, should, we are to yield, amen, to the doctrine of corporate worship. You said, Pastor, why should we yield to the doctrine, or why should we yield amen, to the spirit of corporate worship. Well, the first reason why we should yield to it, because 
the Bible encourages corporate worship. Mm -hmm. Yes, every one of us in the room. We're living in such of a time that many people believe they don't need to be a part of the ecclesia, meaning they'll say, I read my Bible, amen. I don't have to go and be a part of no setting because I am the church. And I say that is true. But according to the scripture right here in the book of Hebrews, the 24th chapter and the 25th verse, 24, excuse me, the 10th chapter, the 24th and the 25th verse, the word says, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. 25 says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exalting one another so much the more as you see the day appropriate. So the scripture tells you and I, and according to the word, it says that when we come together, amen, according to the biblical, amen, parameters, we are encouraging one another. Saints of God, every time I walk in this room and I see that you are here, amen, I'm encouraged by you. Why, Pastor? Because I remember about eight, I, I, I preached in this, 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 I preached in this uh, sanctuary for about 18 long months where nobody was in the building. It was just me and the ministry, amen, the media ministry was up top, and I was preaching to empty pews, amen. And so, amen, the pastor, were you discouraged? No, I wasn't discouraged, amen, because I knew that somebody would hear the word, but I'm more encouraged when I see people. Y'all with me this morning. So when we think about, amen, yielding to the corporate worship, the Bible encourages that, amen. And I know that there are so many people. I talk to them every week, amen. I talk to them time and time, and they'll say, well, I don't have to go to church and because there's so much stuff going on in the church, and people are so this, and people are so that. And I ask them, amen, have you ever went to a doctor, and the doctor gave you bad, a bad diagnosis? Did you just stop going to the doctor? No, you didn't. You went and found you another doctor. Y'all with me this morning. Well, what it comes down to, saints of God, the reason why people are bored, amen, their time of coming to the ministry is not because the church has done anything wrong. They are bored it because they don't have the faith to believe that God is God and beside him there is not other. Well, not only, amen, should we be a pe person that yield to the, to the, amen, the corporate worship, amen, but also we should yield because corporate worship is where teaching take place at. I want you to put that in your notes this morning, saints of God, because that is the thing I always try to emphasize to people. Amen. I know that some of us, we believe that we are so intellectually smart. Amen. We believe, amen, that we don't need nobody, amen, to give us no advice. Amen. And I often wonder, amen, if when I go to the doctor, amen, first lady, and when the doctor's, amen, report comes back on me, I don't try to, amen, diagnose that, that doctor report. I ask the doctor to explain the report to me. Well, why is it, amen, the people, amen, who never had no type of, amen, biblical training, has never been to no type of seminary, amen, believe they can just take the Bible and interpret the way they want to interpret without someone who's been educated to do that. Why is that, saints of God? Well, that is an act of the enemy, amen. So every time that you and I come together as a body of believers, we are to yield to the spirit, amen, the corporate worship because here is the place where teaching takes place. And how do you know that, Pastor? Because the Bible says this way in the book of Acts, the second chapter, the 42nd and the 43rd verse. It says it this way, and they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and the fellowship in the breaking of bread and prayer. And then the fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs was done through the apostles. So we can clearly see that every time we come together, we're not talking about Jet or Ebony App Magazine. We're not talking about CNN, amen, or ABC News. But we're talking about the Word of God. Why? Because when we come together, according to the Scripture, they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. Why the apostles' doctrine, Pastor? I'm glad you asked that question because the apostles' doctrine, amen, was talking about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. And every time we come together in corporate worship, saints of God, the Word of God is 
is going forward. And we know the Bible said the word will not return void, but it's going to accomplish everything that it set out to do. Amen. So that second thing we see in the scripture this morning, amen, that not only are we to yield to the corporate worship because it is encouraged by God, but also we should yield to corporate worship because this is the place where teaching will take place in our life. Well, lastly, amen, that when we yield to the spirit, amen, of corporate worship, amen, here is a place that you and I can come in and publicly proclaim that we are saved and don't have to be ashamed. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. There are many places that you go to. If you go to the football game and you stand up and tell them you saved, they'll look at you like you lost your mind, saints of God. Amen. You go to the grocery store, amen, and stand up in the midst, amen, of an aisle and say, I'm saved, amen. I'm sanctified and filled with God's Holy Spirit. They are called a law on you and get some type of some type of crazy house but when we come into the household of faith you can stand up and say i'm saved you can stand up and say i'm filled with god's holy spirit you can stand up amen and say that god is for me amen and if god is for me who can be against me and that's why we come together for corporate worship because all that has been pinned up in me amen all week long when i come and stand in this amen this podium man when i stand in, amen, in this pulpit i can declare and proclaim and say the earth is alone and the fullness there are and the world and they that dwells there are y'all with me this morning so when we come for corporate worship here is a place where every one of us don't have to be silent amen, amen. it used to be a time in church amen when somebody would give God praises and honor people would look at them like they're crazy but saints of God when I come into this house amen this is the place where I can let go amen and be free in God because who the son have set free I'm free indeed I don't have to be ashamed of the gospel because this should be the place where people can recognize the same God whom I serve you serve that same God and the same fire I have amen you have that same fire and the same Holy Ghost I have you have that same Holy Ghost are y'all with me this morning yes, sir. and that's what the Bible says in the book of Ma Matthews 12th chapter 31st it says he who he who is not with me well. is against me and he who does not gather with me well, is scattered abroad. Uh -huh. That's what I like to emphasize to people, amen. If you're not a part of some type of corporate worship, well, you are scattered. That's right. Why, pastor? Because the word says, my sheep, they know my voice. Yep. Yep. And a stranger, they shall not follow. And every time we come together, saints of God, you ought to, and I should be drawing closer and closer to God. Yep. Why? Because when we come in corporate worship, the word supposed to call us to go closer and closer to God. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you're drawn closer to God, he will draw closer to you. So when we come to, we come, amen, to corporate worship, this is not a place where we come and close our mouth. This is the place when I say, let the church say amen, you ought to be saying Amen. When I say amen, you ought to clap your hand. You ought to be clapping your hand. Yes, because it's a place where we come in corporately that God may be glorified. Now I got you. Amen. Therefore, according to the scripture, there is a need for corporate worship. Mm -hmm. Because it is doing corporate worship that the believer can experience God's power and the fellowship of his suffering. Mm -hmm. That brings us to our text this morning. In our text, Psalms 95, David is given credit for writing this text. David, we all know that David was a shepherd boy. We know that David, amen, was a king of Israel. We know that David was a man after God's own heart. But David also was a psalmstress, amen, that many, many times that would write psalms that would encourage those who know who God is to be more encouraged. And so David in Psalms 95, he provides direction and instructions which, would, which should occur when we come together as, a, as people of God. Thanks to God, when we come together, God is a God of order. He really is. But he also is a God who he, he deserves our honor and he deserves our praises. And so this morning, there are three things I want to show you in the scripture. That when we come to corporate worship, amen, there are, this is how we're supposed to respond in the church. I know that many times, amen, that people will come to the house of the faith 
and they don't open their mouth, amen, because they sometimes are embarrassed of how they, how people are going to look at them. But when I, can I tell you something, saints of God? If you find yourself in a situation and God pulls you out of it, amen, you've got to tell somebody, amen. You've got to open your mouth and let people know that the God whom I serve is able to do everything but fail. So the first point this morning, amen, corporate worship should be a place of singing and shouting yes. with joy. Yes. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him, say, neighbor, yes. we ought to come in this place, this place. and sing yes. and shout yes. with joy. Yes. Yeah, every one of us in the room this morning, we ought to be singing and shouting with joy. You say, Pastor, why should I be singing and shouting with joy? You don't know what I've been through, amen. Well, I know this, amen. God is still on your side, amen. Yes. Because it could be worse than what you're going through, amen. If you got eyes to see and ears to hear and you still got breath in your lungs, amen, there is still, amen, a possibility that all things will work for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to that purpose, amen. So corporate worship should be a place when we come in singing and shouting with joy. Why? The Bible says this way, amen. You're in Psalms 91. Amen. That first verse says, amen, it says, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Right. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. You, so the psalmist encourages we should come in this place singing and shouting. What that mean, Pastor? That means singing, making a melody. That means, Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you more today. That's singing. Shouting is God has been good to me. Amen. He's opened doors that no man can close and closed doors that no man can open. Amen. That's what shouting is. That's telling your testimony what God has done for you. Are y'all with me this morning? So the son that says, amen, that we are to let us collectively Plurally, amen. Everybody in the room ought to have a praise report, amen. Your praise report don't have to be like mine, amen. Your praise report, amen, don't have to be, amen, in, in, in deep, amen, compassion like mine is, amen. But you ought to have a praise report in your mouth, amen. If God has been good to you, you ought to tell somebody, amen. God still gave me eyes I can see, amen. I still got legs I can walk, amen. I'm, amen. I'm in my right mind, amen. I still know my name. Are y'all with me this morning, amen. I still got provisions, amen. God put some food in my refrigerator, man. He gave me some water, amen, to wash my body, amen. He gave me a car to drive. Are y'all with me this morning? That's shouting before God. So the son that says, let us. Come on, look at your neighbor. It's a neighbor. God wants you to participate in shouting and singing with joy. Yeah, God is calling us to participate, saints of God. If we go to the football game, which I do, and get excited, amen, when they make a touchdown, which I do, I, when I come into the house of the faith, amen, when God is moving on, on behalf with his spirit, I should have that same excitement that I have at the football game. Are y'all with me this morning? So he says, let us shout and sing. To the Lord. Why? Why, Pastor? Why should I shout saying to the Lord? It's right there in the scripture. Because he's a rock of my salvation. Uh -huh. Now we all know, amen, a rock has many different metaphors, first lady. It has many different metaphors, sister Peggy, amen. A rock, amen, is something solid. It could be a foundation. But a rock, amen, in this particular setting, amen, sister Hudson, amen, that God is telling us that we ought to shout and sing because he's my hiding place. Are y'all with me this morning? When the enemy tried to come against me like a flood, amen, I hid in the rock, amen, and God protected me. Are y'all with me this morning? So he said this morning, when you look back over your life, somewhere down the line, God hid you. The enemy came in and tried to take your life. The enemy came in and tried to take your mind. The enemy came in and tried to take your health. But God hid you and you ought to shout and sing before his, his holy name. And that's why he tells Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What he was telling Peter, amen, I'm going to be your hiding place, amen. And when I become your hiding place, 
hiding place, amen. You ought to shout and you ought to sing with joy. Are y'all with me this morning? I praise God this morning, Brother Eddie, that God is my hiding place. And if they close down the government, amen, God will be my hiding place, amen. If they close the doors on tomorrow, God will be my hiding place because in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning if you believe that. Next point, corporate worship should be a time for thanksgiving. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God wants you to be thankful. Yeah, God wants you to be thankful, saints. We all, hey man, can experience negative Nancy. You know, she's always negative. We all can experience bark and bark. He always barks about everything. But God wants his people to be thankful. I know that you say, Pastor, sometimes I don't want to be thankful. Well, the word of God tells us, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning. Why did you say that, Pastor? Because sometimes we're just plain disobedient to the word of God. God tells us to be thankful. But we say we don't want to be thankful, amen. But he says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The scripture said it this way in these second, the verse, second, the second and third verse. Look what he says. He said, let us, another invitation, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us, another invitation, shout joyfully to him with psalm. Third verse says, for the Lord is a great God and the great king upon all the gods. Now, Pastor, can you unpack this this morning? Well, what God, this psalmist is saying to all of us, Sister Karen, amen, he is saying that when we come before his presence, we are to come to God with a heart of gratitude. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God wants you to have a heart of gratitude. Why should I have a God heart of gratitude? It's right there in the scripture. Because the Bible says the Lord is, is a great God and the great king upon all the earth. So what God is trying to sum is trying to say, amen. He's saying to all of us in the room, amen. He's telling all of us, amen, Sister Tracy, not to be self-centered, but be God-centered, amen. And when you're God-centered, I know, amen, things are going wrong, amen. I know that things are not going the way you thought they would go, but you got to believe in your heart, amen. If God is for you, nothing can be against you, amen. That's when you move from self-centered to God-centered, amen. He who keep his mind stayed on me, I'll keep you in perfect peace. I move from self-centeredness to God-centered, amen. All things work for the good of those who love the Lord, and called according to his word, I move from self-centeredness to God-centeredness. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God is calling you out of self to God. Yeah, what he's saying in the scripture this morning, he's showing us, amen, in God's presence, we cannot be self-centered, amen. We've got to be God-centered. And that's why the Bible says, Paul said it this way in Philippians the fourth chapter, the 11th verse, he says, not that I speak, amen, in respect of want, amen, for I have learned, amen, and whatsoever state I am to be content, pastor. What does content mean? Content means, amen, a state of peace and happiness. Paul says, amen, I had to learn this, amen. It didn't come overnight, amen. I went through some hard times. I went through some tough times, but I've learned that whatever I go through, that God is with me. And when I go through it, amen, I've learned to be content. I wish I had one or two people in the room, amen, this morning say, Pastor, I know what Paul is saying. I've been some, through some good times, and I've been through some bad times, but I've learned to be content in God. I've learned to lean on him. I've learned to trust in him. I've learned, amen, that if God be for me, who would be against me? So the second part that we come to corporate prayer, we ought to walk in this place with a heart of thanksgiving, amen. We ought to not be feeling sorry for ourselves, amen, but we ought to look to the hills which cometh our help, amen, and our help come from the Lord. We ought to see God, amen, high and lifted up and know that he's able to do everything but fail. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning if you believe that. Lastly, part of the scripture teaches us, so we're going to be, cor our corporate time is a time of joy. Our corporate time is a time of thanksgiving. Lastly, we see in the scripture 
when we come together corporately, since we're there, the Bible teaches us, amen, we come together corporately, we should put ourselves in a position to honor God. Amen. Right here in the Word. The Bible said in that fourth and fifth verse, the Word says, in his hands are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his, his also. The sea is his, for he has made it, and his hands form the dry ground. So we all know, according to Genesis, thanks to God, that God created the heavens and the earth. We know, amen, that when he made it, amen, he made everything good. Yeah. When you understand it, amen, you know that when you come in corporate worship, you come to honor God. Amen. I know that sometimes we believe, amen, that we are the most important, amen, when it comes in corporate worship. Can, say, can I tell you something, amen? We didn't come to see each other this morning. We came to see Jesus high and lifted up because he said, if I be lifted up, he do the drawing, amen. And I know that sometimes, amen, people put themselves right in the, in the same, amen, on the level of God. But can I tell you something this morning? That God is the only one who deserves honor and praise, amen, because he is the only maker and the creator. And the word says in his hand, are the deep places. I told you a few Sundays ago, amen, when you put it in God's hand, amen, God's hand is bigger than my hand, amen. God's hand can reach farther than my hand. God's hands, amen, have more strength than my hand, amen. And that's why the word of God says right here, first lady, in St. John's, amen, the 10th chapter, 20 by first, he says, my father who gives them to me is greater than them all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. Are y'all with me this morning? When you put it in God's hand, amen, God will honor your request. So, pastor, what is he saying this morning? The son is saying, amen, when we come in corporate worship, amen, we ought to honor God. That means you ought to be obedient to his word. That's why Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 33 and 3, I called upon the Lord and he heard me, amen. He, amen, he gave me everything I need. I wish I had one or two people in this room this morning that would just really honor God, amen, because he is God and beside him, there is not other. Psalmist goes on and says, amen, the, he says, in his hands are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his, his also. The sea is in his hands, in his, and made it, and his hands form the dry ground. Well, we see in the scripture that his hands is used for two things. His hands is used to create, but his hands is also used to love. And that's why we used to sing that song growing up in Bible stores too, amen, amen. He has a whole world in his hand, amen. He has mother, he has father, he has sister and brother. He has a whole world in his hand because in his hand, he does not only just create, amen, charity, but he loves you. And that's why he says in his word, amen, he says in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have his being. So, pastor, what are you trying to tell us this morning? My brothers and sisters, amen, as a born-again believer, we should never, amen, neglect the time because God has given us time amen that his purpose and his plan will be done here on earth and that's why David says amen he says that when you come together in corporate worship according to Psalms amen Psalms 133 amen he said behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity amen it is like amen the precious oil upon the head that runs down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, amen, running down on the edge of his garment, amen. And saints of God, may I tell you something this morning, we have come in this place, amen, to worship and praise God. It makes no difference, amen, if it's two of us, amen. It makes no difference if it's 22 of us. It makes no difference. If it's 222 of us, amen, as long as when we come, amen, we know that God is to be glorified. And may I encourage you this morning that every time we come together, amen, in corporate worship, amen, we ought to come into the house, amen, shouting and singing with joy, amen. We ought to come in the house, amen, with the, amen, with the heart of thanksgiving. But most of all, we ought to come in honoring God, amen, because he is God and beside him there is none other. So all God is trying to tell us, amen, He's trying to re redirect our attention, amen. He says, 
amen. The earth is the Lord and the fullness there are and the world and they that dwell in it. When we come to worship, amen, we come to worship him, amen, because he's Lord of Lord and he's King of kings. We come to worship him because he's given us a name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. When we come to worship him, amen, we come to worship him because he's our God and beside him there is none other. I don't know about you this morning, but I came in the house, amen, with a shout, amen, and a song of joy. I came in the house, amen, with a heart of gratitude because God's been good to me. But I came in the house honoring God because he is the maker and the creator and the sustainer of life. And saints of God, amen, God is trying to help us understand when we come to the house, we got to come to be a participant, amen, and not just a spectator. We got to come, amen, giving God the honor, giving God the praises, amen. Let him know that he is God and beside him there is none other. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning if you believe that. Corporate worship. We come to this house, saints, with a shout and a song of joy. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world won't take it away. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. I come in the house, amen, to give God thanks. Because this is the day the Lord has made. And he invited me to be a part of it. But most of all, I come in this house to honor God. Why, pastor? Because it was at the cross. At the cross where I first saw the light. And all the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. It was there by faith that I received my sight. And now I can honor him all the day. Saints of God, it was at the cross. That's why I honor God. Because it was at the cross where he met me at, amen. And he found me, amen, a sinner. But he saved me by grace. And that's why I honor him. Because when nobody else could do it, it was God who did it. And so saints, please know that when we come in the house, we don't just come to be spectators. But we come because God is a God where he wants us to shout and say, amen. Reverend Brown, every Sunday, amen, he begs the congregation to get it with it. Get with it. That's all he said. Get with it, amen. Because we come in the house to shout and sing, saints. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why he begs us every Sunday to get with it. Because he knows, amen, when we worship and praise God, God will fill the room. Yes, sir. He will move. And we will be fed from heaven because he's God. And God all along. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Give my hand clap of praise if you believe that this morning. Come on, stand on your feet. I'm done. We want to give an opportunity, amen. We know that everybody in the room, amen, is here. But somebody may hear this message. And I hope you do hear it. And you don't understand what corporate worship is really about. We come together because... God wants us to come together. Amen. You can stay at home and watch it online, but it's nothing like coming together, saints. Ain't nothing like being in the fellowship of God's people. Ain't nothing like holding your hand, shaking your hand, hugging you, amen, when I'm not all sweaty, amen. Nothing like that. Because that's the God whom we serve, the God whom we serve, the God whom we know, He comforts us. He holds us. He has relationship with us. And as I say, there is a lot of people that I come in contact from day in and day out who have lost faith in the ecclesia. And my question to them is, did you really know who Jesus is? Because if you know who Jesus is, you can't lose faith in the ecclesia. Because Peter cussed a man out. Moses hit the rock when he's supposed to have been speaking to the rock. Paul persecuted the church, and now he is a disciple of Christ Jesus. Amen. Thomas doubted, but Jesus still gave him opportunity for a second chance. What are you saying, Pastor? When people lose faith in the church, they don't really know who God is. Because it is no way possible you know the word of God and you see that God gives grace and mercy to people who make mistakes. But you in your own selfish mindset 
is going to say, I'm not going to trust nobody no more who's a part of the ecclesia. That's ridiculous, saints. It really is. And so I pray that somebody would hear this message through our YouTube. You have lost confidence in the ecclesia. For David helps us understand this morning why we come. We come with a shout. We come with a song of joy. We come to say, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. But most of all, we come saying, Abba, Father, we come honoring you because you are the only one who can save our soul. So I pray that someone would hear this message that you really don't know the true meaning of corporate worship. True meaning of course for worship, amen, we come because God has delivered us from the hand of the enemy. And yes, we got our problems like everybody else has their problems. And yes, amen, we have our moments like everybody else has their moments. And yes, we don't get along like everybody else don't get along. But praise God upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail again. Are you with me this morning, saints? I'm never going to turn my back on the ecclesia. Because I know how powerful the church is when we do it God's way. And I'm going to defend the ecclesia every time I come in the midst of people who want to downplay and want to say that we are no good and we don't have no use. The devil is a liar. God has called you and I out, saints of God, to be pillars in this last and evil days. To do it right when everybody else is doing it wrong. To be a light when everybody else has been a dark. To be salt, amen, when nobody else has taste. And I hope somebody hear this message through our YouTube channel. I hope you hear this message that the ecclesia is alive and is well. Father, we are grateful. And Lord, I thank you for the fire that lives on the inside of us. Thank you, Lord God, that we understand the ecclesia. We understand the called out body of believers. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy, God. That God, if it was not for your grace and mercy, we would turn our back on you. But we thank you, Lord God, that you told us the earth is the Lord and the fullness there are in the world and they that dwell in it. Father, I come this morning and I pray for that individual who has been hurt, who's been disappointed, who's been let down by one that was immature that called themselves a child of God. I pray for their hearts this morning, God, that God, your word says you was wounded for our transgressions. You was bruised for our iniquities. The chest has upon you for our peace and with your stripes, God, we're healed. Father, I pray right now, God, for that one individual who, Lord God, the enemy has, Lord God, persuaded them that there is no use for the ecclesia. Lord, I thank you and praise you, God, that you have already showed us in the word. You said upon this rock, upon this foundation, upon this hiding place, upon, Lord God, this place of security, you would build your church. And the gates of hell would not prevail. God, I pray for the individual who's, Lord God, who's lost faith in God, the ecclesia. I pray for them this morning. I pray, God, that just like Peter, you would restore their faith. You told Peter that Satan has a desire to sift you as a wheat. But God, you told him that you prayed for him, that his faith would not fail him. And you said when he was converted to convert others. God, I pray for the faith of your people. That God, their faith would not fail them in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that as we taught on Wednesday night, they would be like Jesus and say, Lord, forgive them. Forgive them. 
Forgive them because they know not what they do, God. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, you forgive them because they know not what they do, God. They allow themselves to be used by the hand of the enemy. And I thank you and I praise you, God, that not only we forgive them, but we release them on this hour in the name of Jesus. That, God, we can be about your business. Lord, thank you for what you're doing here at Carries. Thank you that you've called us here to develop disciples of all ages, teaching them to know they're born of the Spirit of God and all the promises belong to them. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that, God, you would always keep a fire in my belly, Lord God, to be passionate, Lord God, by what you've called me out to do. Lord, I pray for these sheep here. That, God, every time they come, Lord God, that you give me words that will feed them, Lord God. That, God, they will be hungry no more. I pray, God, they will be sheep, Lord God, that will be always be drawn to the pasture. That you could feed them, God, green grass. Lord, I pray for these sheep right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. If their hearts are vexed, Lord God, if their hearts are hurting, Lord God, if their hearts are disappointed, God, you heal them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for the ones that are here. I thank you, God, for, their, for them coming by faith, believing, God, that you are still God. And beside you, there is none other. Lord, I just thank you for this time. I thank you. I never take this time for granted, Lord God. God, I thank you, Lord God, for the time that we sit down in our private time and how you fill me up, Lord God, to be able to fill your people up. And Lord, I just worship you. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. I, I honor you, Father. I praise your name. God, you've given us a name that's above all names. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Thank you that we're not ashamed, Lord God. We're not ashamed to call ourselves a child of yours. We're not ashamed, Lord God, to let the world know, God, in, in you we live and you we move. And you will have our beings. Now, Father, I thank you, Father, for continuing on breathing upon your people. Lord, I pray for all those who are here, a part of carriage, God, that's faced with the enemies come against their bodies. Lord, I bind that up in the name of Jesus. I speak healing. I speak healing, God. I speak healing. I speak restoration, God. I speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. For you said in your word, death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they who love it shall eat the fruit of it, God. I speak healing this morning in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I give your name the glory. I give your name the honor. And I count it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands this morning. Go ahead and play, Reverend Brown. Amen. Play what you're playing. Amen. Let's, let's just worship the Lord just for a moment. Go on and play what you're playing. I love him. I hear you playing it. Pray, play it. Amen. Come on, I want you to meditate on this. Amen. Come on, just worship the Lord just for a moment before we leave this place. Come on, we don't know what the week going to hold. Just worship God. Worship him. That's why we came to honor him and praise him. Come on, lift up your hands as a sign of surrendering. Just worship the Lord this morning. Amen. Ask God to fill you up. Whatever void that's in your life, ask God to fill it right now Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. Worship him. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Your word. We give you, Lord, the highest praise. You've been so good. Thank you, You've been Thank you, so good. Thank you, God. God, let your anointing rest You've in this house. You've been so good. You've been stand up and raise their hands and say hallelujah hasn't he been good to you today yes yes he deserves the praise
praise. He's worthy to be praised. Yes, we want to say hallelujah. We give you, Lord, the highest praise. praise. Hallelujah. God, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, God. We give you the higher praise, God. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth and tell him thank you. Hallelujah, God. Shabbat God. God, we invoke your presence in the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord God, for keeping us. Thank you, God, for keeping your hedge of protection around us, God. Thank you, God, for when the enemy meant for evil, you turned into good, God. Thank you for being our provider and our protector, God. Thank you, God, for loving us when nobody else would love us. God, thank you for accepting us in, Lord God, when we were yet sinners, Father. You already had died for us. We worship you. Oh, we worship you, God. Come on, worship him this morning. Come on. We worship you, God. We worship you, Lord. God, you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. <laughs> my, my, my. I know he's here. I know he's here. Amen. Come on, we're not done. Come on, he's still here. Come on, worship him. He wants to fill you up. I know he's here because we don't know what to do. I, he, I know he's here. Come on, he wants to fill you up. Come on, he wants to fill you up. There's a void place. He wants to fill right now. He wants to fill it right now. He wants to fill it. He have taught us about corporate worship this morning. He wants to fill that void place. Come on, don't quench the Holy Spirit. Don't quench him this morning. Hallelujah. Let him feel that place. Let him feel that void place. Hallelujah. Let him feel that void place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody sing it. Y'all know the words we give you, Lord. We give you, Lord, the highest praise. You've been so good. You've been so good, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so good, Lord. You give you, Lord, the highest praise. May the grace of our Lord and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, God, let it rest, rule, and abide within our hearts. God, we pray that, God, we know not what tomorrow may hold, but, God, we know you hold it. And we will worship and praise you, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 amen.